Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about the difference between Project Acoustics and this is one technology that is supported by Xbox Series X, as you can see here. Defining the next generation Xbox Series X technology glossary, this is on Xbox website. And if you scroll down here, I'm going to just search for it, you see Special Audio. Now first of all, Special Audio, so this is the uh, 3D audio technologies and the Xbox Series X comes with a custom audio hardware, as you can see here. To offload audio processing from the G from the CPU, so you know, so we can have better performance. So you know, they won't be processed on the CPU. But they also support the Xbox Series X. Also support Dolby Atmos, um, and DTSX, again, and Windows Sonic. So this is the audio engines. But if these are the audio engines. What is actually Project Acoustics? Right? I'm kind of confused. I thought this is the engine itself. Well, apparently. It's not. So what is it? Well, in this video, I'll try to figure this out with you. I'm not an expert in this field, but I go over some things, interesting uh, uh, topics here and information, uh, which hopefully help us understand what process acoustics is. And uh, so let's begin. Well, based on the description, you can see that it provides, uh, you know, it is unique in simulating wave effects like diffraction in complex scene geometries geometries without straining CPU and also plug-in support for both the Unity and Unreal Engine. Cool, but I still don't understand. Now, on Microsoft website we can find on Project Acoustics more, you know, frequently asked questions. You can see here, Project Acoustics suit of plugins is an acoustic system that calculates sound wave behavior prior to runtime. Prior to runtime, right? Not during runtime, so it's not dynamic. You know, like static lining. And the cloud does the heavy lifting of wave physics computations. All right. So the cloud does all this, you know, kind of a computational work. And you can see this is incorporated using uh, plugins. So why it's like static lighting? Well, because with static lighting, you can pre-compute the lighting and then use it in the scene to apply different effects. But it's not dynamic. And even if you put kind of change the lighting in the scene like the day, it's still pre complicated for different type of hours, for example, when the sun is located. So it's still not dynamic. It can be static. Depends on the game and how it's implemented. Now you can see here, this is important. You can see uh, Project Quisic does support moving sound sources, all right? But it doesn't support uh, dynamic geometry. And it says closing doors, uh, wall blown away. For example, if you blow a wall, right, it's now the geometry changes now we have many particles now no, sorry 3d objects that represent the walls it was before now if it was like in real time the sound waves now adjust right every single in a single update when the object moves the sound should actually adapt so we need to be real time it, it's not supported of course because this is very very in terms of computations even with a static one, a static scene, it's very heavy. So let alone dynamic one, right? So yeah, it's not supported. Uh, does Project Acoustic use acoustic materials? Yes, materials are picked from physical materials, names in your level, driving uh, absorptivity. So basically this is up to the developer to uh, assign different materials to different 3D objects uh, in the scene. Right, but as you can see here, these are kind of a set of tools and services that allow developers uh, alongside the 3D audio uh, that exists on the platform to uh, provide them, provide their, the players with more immersive audio experience. But this is something developers need to do because it needs to adapt to each specific level. It's not kind of automatic. Uh, all right. So this actually, this question by the way answers why in the cloud, why can you do it on the console itself? Well, uh, you see Project Acoustics provide accurate and reliable acoustic parameters even for ultra complex virtual environments. Imagine you need to do this for a very complex scene, right? Uh, taking every architectural aspect into account, provide smooth occlusion, obstruction, and dynamic reverb var uh, variation without the manual work of drawing volumes. Now, I think the emphasis here is on smooth occlusion, right? Smooth, right? Because for example, if a player hides behind a wall, right? If it moves from the front of the wall to behind, the occlusion can be kind of, you know, the differentiation between the sound volume for example can be very harsh but if you use the simulation you have those parameters that provide a smooth change in volume but it's not that the volume but again uh, other public parameters kind of the transition is smoother because the simulation provide this information uh, uh, to the game engine and then uh, to the 
um, audio engine. Now, if you look here, you can see uh, big time versus runtime voxels. Uh, again, this is for design time. You can see the voxels. So instead of having kind of this one effect performance, uh, in design time, you're just going to see a low resolution one. But the runtime voxels, uh, as you can see, are going to be much more dense. And you see, it's even saying the description. This is because acoustics runtime interpolation uses a finer voxel grid for smoother interpolation results. Uh, sound source placement should be uh, verified um, using the runtime voxel, so it'll be very accurate. This is an interesting article. I'm just going to go over the you know the main concept here. 3D interactive titles achieve their particular sound using uh, you know DSP audio digital signal processing blocks, also in the audio engine. Uh, in that case, it's the uh, you no know, 3D audio engine. All right? These blocks range in complexity uh, from simple mixing, reverberation, echo, delay. You know all these parameters um, uh, getting affected uh, based on the design of the level. Uh, all right. Uh, see here, all these parameters adapt to changing conditions. So this parameter for each actually sound source will change based on different conditions, right? Uh, the sound designer will often arrange volumes throughout the space that are programmed. So example, if there's a, the sound source is attached to a central object and you just, uh, for example, this object like is maybe uh, 10 meters away, uh you know the sound the volume of the sound will just be reduced all right but probably probably is going to be like a math equation it just reduces uh the volume based on the sound the location of the sound from the player all right but of course other things can change as you can see the vibration echo delay all of this so these are the parameters that i talked about um but the, the idea is we're to try to uh approach audio design same as we do with uh 3d design of uh, you know physics uh in the 3d design so it will behave like light is behaving in the scene same goes to the audio as you can see um, a visual designer doesn't see individual pixel volumes but rather adjust 3d molders materials and lighting transmit system that are all physically based to trade off visual aesthetic and see because what we would be equivalent process for audio. Project acoustics is the first step in that exploration of this question. All right. Uh, so the idea is that you're going to use a simulation that allows you to uh, get uh, different um, um, parameters, and also uh, the, those parameters uh, will be adjustable. Uh, I mean, sometimes developers want to make some adjustment that doesn't follow you know the real physics for example like the real physics of the sound waves so we don't want for example the, this a particular room to provide so much kind of uh, echo right we want to reduce it or make the sound appear less wet than it is you know because like telling a story doesn't have to be always accurate so we're going to have this uh you see the filter wouldn't enforce a certain level of occlusion or reverb tail length much like sunglasses don't make every room the same brightness the filter might just make every occluder less or more so it'd be just provide you more accurate and same goes to transitions right because if you create something uh, manually for example if you move from one place to the other maybe the transition will be so harsh so the idea is also uh, because the simulation provides very accurate result you're going to see kind of more smooth transition for example if a sound just passes behind something right just go behind a door right because if you want to do it manually uh, and justice, for example, in code, you're probably going to find that, you know, there's kind of a very harsh uh, differentiation in sound levels, right? Now, this part, by the way, kind of summarizes things. You can see sound design in Project Acoustics. The Project Acoustics package integrates each of the components described above, a simulator and encoder that extract parameters and build the acoustic asset, audio DSP, and a selection of filters sound design with project acoustics entails choosing parameters for the filters that adjust the occlusion and reverberation parameters derived from simulation right and apply to the audio dsp with dynamic controls exposed inside the game editor and the game engine again 
game engine. So we are talking about the 3D uh, audio engine. We can talk about you know those that are supported by platform like the Xbox Series X uh, supported audio engines. But those of course uh, need to be uh, you know those audio engines will probably support this type of um, parameters, which are already once used without actually if you're not if you're not using Project Acoustic, these parameters already exist. You see. Um, see block hosted in an audio engine these blocks range in complexity mixing to vibration echo delay all these parameter equalization compression limiting and other effects all right so the other uh, game engine uh, sorry sorry game engine audio engine should support this so the project acoustic should actually based on my understanding and correct if i'm wrong supported by many if not uh, all of the audio engine that have support for this type of parameters. I don't know if all parameters are supported by each engine, but I do believe that you know, the ones that are actually mentioned here are supported. But again, not expert in this field, but from my understanding, Project Acoustics should provide, uh, should also be compatible uh, with any of the uh, audio engines out there. Again, it's kind of a middleman here, right? Just helping with the design, doesn't kind of a, um, force itself to only specific audio engine right it just kind of a set of filters and just parameters which are used by uh, audio engines all right so based on what i understand here and I really try to spend time it's kind of heavy for me but i really try to spend time and try to understand this so uh for my understanding although it lists as part of the technologies this is actually a technology for developers which I first thought maybe it's kind of something, you know, just, you know, for Xbox Series X. But if I understand things right, this means that developers can use it in Unity and Unreal Engine uh, and can use it with different type of audio engines and doesn't necessarily have to be a game for the Xbox Series X. This can be something for the PlayStation 5. But so this is it for this video. Uh, I need to read more, much more. Uh, because I need to get into the aspect of uh, the development, you know, and something that, you know, I'm a web developer, not a game developer, but you now I have some, uh, you know, um, background with development. So it's not like I'm kind of trying to understand this from, you know, from nothing. Uh, still, it's complicated and I need to read more. Uh, so this is it. If you have anything to add, uh, please, uh, you know, let's open up, in, open it up in the comment section below. Uh, that's all the information I was able to get until now, kind of understand the difference between project uh, acoustics and we you know sonic and the game engine it's kind of confusing right especially when you're going over it i first thought it's you know, just the 3d engine but well now we read it's not uh, so again very interesting and you know i just want to know uh, because i read all these terms everywhere right you read everywhere uh, and sometimes they are not actually explained correctly or not explained enough for us to actually understand things but again not that i'm saying everything here is of course is perfect i'm just trying to you know on the way as I learn to share this information with you. And uh, you know, if you have any information uh, other than this, please let me know in the comment section below. So again, thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.